They're just pigs. They're just absolute pigs. Squealing, pathetic, stinky swine. So I recently just released the new and final investigative episode into Skinwalker Ranch. Now obviously when you're investigating people who are making outlandish claims, you're going to have to ask and look for evidence, proof, data, what is there, show me. And eventually you're going to have to make some kind of determination, a statement, a journalistic statement that says, yes, there's proof, no, there's not, maybe there is. And when it comes to my statement, after years of research, five investigative episodes, my statement is there appears to be a whole lot of nothing at Skinwalker Ranch. Now this is a controversial thing to say given how popular of an urban legend Skinwalker Ranch is. And a lot of viewers are asking, how are the people who are making these claims reacting to my reporting? Well, I'd like to share a little bit of that. So after part four was released, there's a scene in there that Brandon Fugel, the owner of Skinwalker Ranch, really latched onto. And it's a scene in the foyer of the ranch house where Fugel and others share their stories about spooky things that have happened in the foyer above a green chair by a window. This is a special spot in the house. And the reason this is a special spot is because before Fugel bought the ranch, a defense intelligence agency scientist named James Lakatsky visited the ranch for 45 to 60 minutes. And during this time, he claims he saw a ghostly apparition appear in midair right in front of him. But he says he saw this in the kitchen. And others involved with Lakatsky's investigation also say that this happened in the kitchen. But at some point between Lakatsky's investigation and Fugel's investigation, that ghostly encounter moved mistakenly from the kitchen to this foyer. So you have the kitchen right there, but it's right here. Fugel and his team thought that Lakatsky experienced his ghost thing in this foyer. So James was actually standing right here mm -hmm. when he saw a pier where you're standing. Right where I'm standing. Now, all of a sudden, everything's happening in the foyer. This is a special spot in the house. We've had multiple people um, witness something in front of this window. Oh, I saw something there too, and, and I saw something there too, and my wife saw something there too. Kristen was standing right here and, she and saw... looking toward the same area that James had been looking toward, mm -hmm. and suspended in the air was this grid-like structure. But it's all predicated upon, built upon, the idea that Lakatsky had his experience here. When he didn't, he had it in the other room. And then some other people who've been here wouldn't even sit. Right, they won't even they sit won't in front sit of this, this yeah. window. People, no one, people we'll sit here? Yeah. Well, not just that. <laughs> well, we, we sit there all the time. Oh, okay. But. <laughs> but there are people that refuse to even sit where you're sitting because of what they've witnessed suspended in the air right above you. Right above me. After this episode launched, Fugel texted and emailed me saying, after my wife and I watched this episode, she would like to clarify that she didn't actually see her ghostly thing in the foyer. She actually saw it in the kitchen, which is where Lakatsky saw it, which is the right place. I was like, okay. But that doesn't account for the other stories they told me. There's something about that window and there is maybe something happened in front of that window. And so then Fugel sends a all hands on deck email. He CCs everyone, all the Skinwalker investigators, he CCs George Knapp, the author of the previous Skinwalker books, saying, hey, upon viewing Stephen Greenstreet's episode, basically, we need to get our story straight. We mistakenly said Lakatsky had his experience here. It actually happened in the kitchen. And so basically, we all need to get on the same page here and moving forward, if when we tell this story, it's now in the kitchen. 
I'm not really sure why I was CC'd on this email, though I appreciate the transparency, but to me it just sounds like people making things up and then wanting to correct themselves retroactively. Another part of this episode that got a reaction from Brandon Fugel and the Skinwalker investigators. It's a part at the end of the episode where I walk into their war room, this room that has that is capturing all the cameras all around the ranch 24-7. All this data, all this evidence is supposedly coming into this one room through this $30,000 computer that Brandon shows me. And so I ask an obvious question, which is, okay, six years, you've had cameras running 24 seven, you've been collecting all this data. Show me the best evidence that you have of something paranormal. What are some of the best examples of something anomalous? And then they show me three videos of blurry bug-like things. And we're not talking long clips, these are 20 second clips, maybe a minute long, with no second angles, no other data beyond the video. And this caused some controversy because I asked, show me your best. They showed me these three videos which aren't compelling, which offer no proof of anything paranormal. It's just these little blurry little dots. That's the best they have. I asked, that's what they showed me. Fugel responded on Twitter, admitting, we weren't prepared. We weren't prepared. That's my fault. He, ad he admits that they weren't prepared to show me the best that they had. And that's interesting to me because it wasn't like I planned my trip to Skinwalker Ranch the night before. Fugel and I had been going back and forth for months, literally months, leading up to my trip to Skinwalker. And I told him, I want you to show me everything. And he told me on multiple occasions, I'm going to show you everything. Anything you want, ask away. I'll answer everything, right? So I do that. I go out there. I ask the questions. I ask to be shown. I am shown basically nothing. And then afterwards, oh, we weren't prepared. We weren't prepared. So what do I do? I give him a second chance. I emailed Brandon and was like, essentially, look, okay, you weren't prepared before. You said that you weren't prepared and you claim you didn't show me your best. So go ahead and take your time and send me your best and include any and all raw data that you have. And he replied that he would do it and that his lead scientist, Eric Bard, would take time to collate, aggregate, and curate a presentation for me. I thought that was great. That's awesome. That was exactly the goal all along was you claim this, here's your proof, let's see what you got. Finally, after months go by, I had to finish this episode. I was just waiting for him. I mean, that's one of the reasons this episode took so long. It's because I wanted to give him an abundant amount of time to do what he had to do. Finally, I email him and I say, look, it's been a few months. I need it by February 10th. And he replied, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's gonna happen. I was like, great. February 10th, I get a text. It says, hey, uh, we're not gonna meet your deadline. Is it okay if we turn it in Monday? And I said, okay, no problem. Turn it in Monday. So on Monday, February 14th, he emails me the big thing I've been waiting for, the top evidences of Skinwalker Ranch. And it is a wall of text of just stories. This spooky thing happened. So-and-so observed this. I keep scrolling and there's a little link. I'm like, oh God, thank God, here it is. Here's the link of the raw data. So I click on it and it's literally just six clips from the History Channel show. Not like raw footage from the show, like literally lifted clips from the show, six of them, that's it. And I remember in my head, I said, if this is the best that you have after months and months and months, then you have nothing because this is nothing. This is not evidence. This is not data. So then I finish my episode and click submit. Beep. And then two days after this episode released, on the Skinwalker Ranch website, Brandon Fugel and the Skinwalker crew had a Q&A with fans of the show. 
and during this Q&A with fans, a question is asked about the data. Would you be willing to share the data? Um, I think this is an Eric Bard question. Would you consider putting the data you gather into an open data platform? The same question I've been asking for almost a year. Are you willing to share the data to back up your claims? And this is how Brandon Fugel responded. What we've experienced from certain people who are asking for data or screaming for data as, as, as a cover for trying to, they, they try, they're trying to convey an air of intelligence or so-called intelligence or, or, or critical thinking when in fact, they're just pigs. They're just absolute pigs. Go on. What we are encountering is nothing more than a bunch of swine squealing, squealing, <laughs> pathetic, <laughs> stinky swine. There's no doubt that Mr. Fugel and the rest of the Skinwalker crew are upset by this episode and the conclusions I had to come to because I gave Mr. Fugel multiple chances to deliver on his promise to show me data and evidence. He admitted he wasn't prepared the first time, so I gave him a second chance. I gave him months, and I allowed him to turn in what he had late, after a deadline. And I did all this because I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt that he indeed had something, anything. And if my honest inquiry, my patience, and my sincere curiosity makes me, in Fugel's words, a pig, then oink, oink. <sighs> now here it is, your moment of zen. You know, there's an old saying, you know, don't get in a wrestling match with a pig. You know, you'll both end up getting muddy and besides the pig likes it. <laughs>